So after the initial conversations, or if you've gone out and ridden the horse and seen the horse and like it, you're like, hey, I want to take the next steps um, and to look at looking a little further into what's going on and we'll take it to a veterinarian and have them examine it and make sure it's sound. Um, so the things that you guys can look at before you even take that next step is one, spend as much time on the horse as you can. Some people are like, you can come look at my horse today and go home and not come back until you decide if you want to buy it. Some people will let you take the horse to your farm and try it on a trial period, which is what I recommend. The longer you can spend with the horse, the more you get to know its attitude, if, it's, if, if your personality is going to mesh with this personality, um, and make sure there's no problems. So the longer you can put the horse in your possession before you actually buy it, the better, in my opinion. So the things you, you look for is just personality. You know, is the horse nice? You get along with it? Um, is it limping at all? That's a big one. You know, is it, do you want to have the horse as a trail horse? just to go out and you know, take trail rides on Sundays, or you want to have this horse to be a big time competition horse, and you're going to get judged by some professionals to make sure the horse is sound. You know, what's your goals for the, for the animal? And so when the horse comes in to me, that's, that, that's what we kind of investigate with you as the buyer. So the first thing I do is I interrogate you guys. You know, I ask, <laughs> I ask you a bunch of questions, and I'll go through these questions. Um, you know, has the horse had any medicine in the last week? So, horses are like people. If, if you know you have a swollen knee and your knee hurts, you can take um, Advil or Tylenol. The next thing you know, you feel really good. It's not bothering you anymore. You know, if this horse came in from Texas yesterday and came to you today, and somebody in Texas gave this horse some medicine, we're going to have a kind of a false read on the way the horse looks today. So that's one of the questions. Um, another thing we ask is if you want a drug screen. And what that is, is we'll draw blood and actually send it to the lab and the lab will determine if this horse has medicine on board. And medicine is as, is as simple as like uh, or vanamine, which is our anti-inflammatories. Um, there's also some long acting drugs that can cause the herb. Cause a horse to be calmer than it naturally is, um, and we give these, you know, we give these drugs to horses that are um, have to stay in the stall for a long time and be quiet, or have to be in a medical paddock after an injury to be quiet. Some people give these drugs that are that are uh, calming agents to horses that they want to sell because they want them to be calm while the horse is being ridden and tried. What's a long time? A long said, time. Yeah, what, what would be a Some long of those time? meds are uh, stay in system for three weeks, four Ooh. weeks. Wow. Yeah. So then you yeah. think it's you. <laughs> yeah, so we can pull we can pull blood and, and investigate that. Would that would that be something you'd recommend if they don't want you to take them necessarily home as a yeah. you know, where you can see them for a prolonged period of time? Yeah. Is that maybe now, it's I it's, always recommend a drug screen um, just for a liability. Uh, standpoint, you know, one of the most litigious things that we do as veterinarians is a pre-purchase exam. So, you know, if I if I tell you this is a great horse to buy, and you buy the horse, and the next thing, you know, in a month later it starts limping a little bit, and I miss something, you know, that's not good on on our behalf. So we have to be very thorough, um, very confident what we're doing because it is one of the most litigious things we do. So I always recommend a drug screen. Now, it, it, once it's in your court, you can decide if you want to do it. If you decline, I'll, I'll write down that you decline. If you want to do it, we'll send it to the lab and just be safe. A lot of people who sell horses for a living, they want you to pull the drug screen. You know, the, the professionals, you know, they want to bring a good horse to you and they want to represent the horse honestly. Because as soon as you're not honest in this business, you know, it's just like anything else. The word's going to get out and you're not going to have the business anymore. So. The next thing we ask is, has there ever been surgery performed on this horse? Has he ever had a colic surgery? Uh, has he ever had a chip removed out of the joint? Has he ever had surgery on his throat? You know, we want to know what, what the, his, the medical history is on this horse. Um, we ask about his Coggins, his vaccines when they were done. We ask um, if he has any bleeding when he's working from his nose, any coughing, any respiratory noise. Um, 
a lot of horses we deal with are race horses or barrel horses. Um, if they can't move air into their lungs and out of their lungs efficiently and normally, you know, their time are So that's a big, a big thing to look at in that house. Uh, has the horse ever been lame? What's his lameness history? Why was he lame? Um, is he ever colic? Is he ever, does he have any bad habits? Another question I like to ask is the insurer. You know, we, a lot of these horses that are very expensive, people have insurance on them. And then from that insurance history, you can ask is they have to exclusions. And I don't know if you guys have ever dealt with insurance. It's, they like to take your money, but they don't like to give you money back. And then what they do on these horses is if you have a problem on a leg, they'll continue to take your money, but they'll say, if anything else happens to the right front leg, we're not going to give you any money. So they'll exclude a leg. So we can get some of that information based on the horse's history, based on the insurance. So the next thing we do, you know, we always ask what your intended use is and what the past, what the horse has done in the past. So, you know, if the horse is a reining horse, we want it to be a cutting horse. You want to make sure everything, you know, your visions line up. Um, the other thing we ask is, <coughs> You know, is the horse on any, um, has it had any joint injections or any joint supplements? This joint, there's a, there's a difference between drugging a horse to make them today and then injecting a joint to make them feel better. And so what happens a lot of times is, you know, say this is a super fancy horse, which she is, um, a lot of times if the horse is coming up for sale, they'll take the horse to the vet about two weeks before the sale and do a soundness evaluation and they may inject you know, five or six different joints with cortisone just to make her feel really good. So it's good to know that uh, before you buy a horse, what joints are being injected, what joint supplements is the horse on. The other thing is, you know, feeding. What's the horse get to eat? Grain-wise, hay-wise? Um, what's the environment where the horse lives? Is it in a pasture? Or is it out in a pit? Or is it in a stall? Um, there's some calming agents you can give horses to make them super calm. And there's some routines that people have um, to keep a horse where it's um, pretty calm and easy to deal with. If you change that routine, the horse may get more active and more excited and be harder to deal with. So it's always good to know what, you know, what the routine the horse has been on. Uh, the next step would be just doing a physical exam. So the things we look at in the physical exam are the eyes, the uh, list of the heart, the list of the lungs, oh, it takes temperature. Um, we feel the jugular veins to make sure, you know, a lot of times these horses, if they've been sick or had issues, or if they've been drugged a lot, they're getting uh, injections from somebody who's not very good at it, so their vein will get really thick, so we can feel that. Um, we fill their belly, we check for any incisions from colic surgery. We pick, we pick their legs up, we pick their legs up and feel their legs, make sure they don't have any bow tendons or thickening or swelling. Um, and then we put hoof testers on their feet. Um, and we squeeze their feet and we look at their shoes and we see if they have any tenderness in their, in their feet. So these are hoof testers right here. Um, and then what I like to ask, you always, you know, if you're, you're buying a horse, what I would ask you is, you know, what, what concerns do you have about this horse? And it may be, well, this horse has got like a scar on this leg. Or this horse has got you know, a little swelling over his knee. I don't want to investigate that. So I make sure that I try to get as much information from you guys as buyers um, so I can, you know, address any issues or concerns that you may have before you buy the horse. Neurologic, or they don't have any neurologic deficits. So when we're, when we're walking around and, and we're turning circles and we're jogging out in our lameness arena, we make sure she's not tripping or stumbling or falling over. Everything checks out in here, and everybody's good with what we've seen. What we do is we go outside, we do a flexion exam. So we'll watch the horse jog in a straight line, and then we'll watch the horse jog in a circle in each direction. 
And then what we'll do is we'll do flexions. If there is a little bit of soreness in a specific area that I can't see on baseline, and baseline is when they're in a circle, um, I'll be able to see it when I put a little pressure on those specific areas. 